All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time watching, my name is Matt, and I'm about most of the way through my rebuild of a Cat D4. In this video, I'm gonna be working on a winch. It's, I'm just sitting next to it so you can get an idea of how big this thing is. It's quite large and cumbersome, and it needs a lot of work. Let's do a quick walk around on this thing. It's been like almost a year since I've looked at this, and if you're newer to the channel, you probably don't even remember when I took it off. But uh, So basically, the issue with this thing is it doesn't turn. The, the drum doesn't turn. Pretty sure it's because it's it's all smashed up right here. Most likely they backed into something. So unfortunately to get this off, this is very thick steel. I'm gonna have to get it off to bend it back out. Um, so to do that, you have to split it. The split is right here. And this whole thing breaks in half and then you can take the drum out and hopefully bend it back. So in here you can see it's all welded up right here. And that is from someone over spooling it and then this, you know, you got all the cable in here and this goes in here and it just shatters the whole thing. It's a, apparently a very common issue on these old winches and this is the fix. It would just weld it back up and send it on its way. When I first looked at the tractor, I think in the, it was in the very first video, um, I remember water pouring out of this compartment and it's just full of garbage now that I need to clean out. This is the uh, brake compartment, which the brake band actually looks okay. And uh, so I'll probably just take all this apart and clean it up. So this is a 100% gear driven winch. Runs right off the PTO there that comes from the transmission. The gears actually look in fairly decent shape. Some of those, I mean, they, it is what it is. It'll, they'll clean up okay. Inside of the actual winch, I remember draining it out. It was kind of full of this honey mustard sauce. I did find, it's still in here, this. So, you might think this is a woodruff key that just fell off of a shaft somewhere, but maybe this just, it's in here as a spare. I think that's what we're gonna go with for now. It's just a spare one. This winch has lived a hard life. I mean, you can look right down this line. This is not an optical illusion. That thing is bent over. The welding on here, I mean, it's, someone's been in here welding on it. This side is, is just, that's obviously been broken off and welded. I really, 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 really want a winch on this dozer. So I'm gonna, I'll do whatever I can, but it's gonna be rough. Sponsor for this video is gonna be ibuprofen for the kind of headache I'm gonna about to have. So just for reference, this is a Heister D4 serial number BW3783, Portland, Oregon, made locally. I did find a manual online. I think this is public domain now because it's all over the internet. But this is for my winch, serial number. You can at least kind of see uh, how it's put together. Yeah. Apparently there's only two bolts to break this thing apart. There's one here and one below. This, this is, bolt has definitely been apart. I mean, it's, it's kind of rounded right here. So maybe they took it apart when they had to fix it. They had to weld it back up. Oh. It's not frozen. <sighs> oh, what is this anti seize? So, looks like for sure this is like the brake drum that has to come off because this shaft goes all the way through. It goes through right here and here. You probably also have to remove this nut. Three and a sixteenth. They really didn't try very hard with that welding job. It's like not even close to being aligned. Let me add some heat. Uh, that's pretty stuck on there.
Can't tell if it's coming out or not, or this thing's just gonna shatter. This polar is meant for five eighths, but I think it'll be okay with half. I'll let you guys watch from there. I'm gonna be bravely hiding behind this thing. Is it coming off? I'm at 10 tons right now. Didn't seem to really do it, so I guess it's going to be a try a grade eight all thread, which I have to order since I don't really find it in hardware stores anywhere. All right, well I'm waiting for the grade eight. I'll uh, go ahead and take the rest of this brake stuff apart. It appears as though we have cotter pins made out of nails. Not, uh, not really ideal. It appears as though these bolts just hold these shafts in. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, these can use a little bit of cleaning. Let me take this out. Come on. Ooh, that one's rusty. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, this stuff's gonna clean up, I think. Just needs to be, needs a chance. I'm pretty sure these pins are frozen halfway through. Because they're, they're rotating with respect to this outer bracket, but they're not, I mean, they just need some. There it's turning. It's got grease on it, but it's just, anyway. Here's our asbestos band. Actually, there's a ton of life left on this thing. So I'll just clean it up. I mean, there's, you can tell the rivets are way, way in there. So this is still good. There's these bushings in here. This one, this was not me. This thing was just chewed up. Yeah, so we could probably, I'll see if I can find some new bushings or new pins or both. Yeah, this one's really bad. I remember when I first looked at this thing and this entire thing was full of water and there's actually a cotter pin, I might have taken it out, that was, there's a little drain hole right here and then they, you know, there's a cotter pin through it just to prevent mud from getting up in here but it was so full of junk in here that the water was not draining out. And that's why it's so rusty in here. I did pick up some grade eight all thread, but before I do that, it has me a little bit concerned that this didn't even budge with 12 tons of pressure. So I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm gonna heat up this outside flange a few times and then douse it with penetrating oil. And the goal there is if you do it right, when you douse it uh, through capillary action, penetrating oil gets sucked into the, this actual joint here. And then after I do that, I'm also gonna get it, hit it with a, a couple hits with the dead blow, just maybe to loosen up whatever has, is going on in here that's preventing it from coming out. Yeah, you don't wanna breathe in that smoke. All right, here we go. We're up to 8,000 PSI, which is 16 tons. So 
So that's uh, 18 tons right there. Careful not to get the, the ram hot. I think we've maxed out the hydraulic ram here. Guess I'll give the 50 ton a try. This is probably sure to end in disaster. And that's about 45 tons. Try it right there. I may have gotten it, the pressure went way down. Yeah, yeah, it's dropping down. Is it moving? Can't tell if it's moving. It's, this thing's hovering right at uh, about 30 tons. Yeah, it's moving. about to go. Yep. Yeah. Well guys, I'm not gonna lie, that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to pull. That was 50 tons and I mean the acetylene was on it for probably five plus minutes and then it, it finally popped. I was expecting the shaft to look a lot worse but this is actually, you can just tell by the feel, there's no, it's pretty smooth. There's no burrs, so it was just, there's a rusty area right here, and that's, I think that's where it was locked up. I did drill a hole in here, I was trying to relieve, I was wondering if this was like mushroomed, and I was trying to relieve some pressure. It's only about a half inch deep. It's a long, it's a long key though. So, you know, I'm surprised the all thread survived. I mean, it, it didn't really survive, it's all bent up and, and stretched out. But had the all thread failed, which is probably the next weakest link, my plan was to drill these holes out to 5 8 and then I could do 5 8 all thread. So this is the side that's probably never been off. Jeez, like this rim right here, I think is like really tight on the inside. No, oh, gear looks really good though. Ow. Looks like we actually have to pull this thing. free here. So 
So the feet of the hoist were actually preventing it from splitting because they were tied up around those six by sixes on the bottom. So I rotated it and now it should pop off. Honestly, the best way to do this would be on its side, but uh, I guess live and learn, right? Yeah, now it's gonna come right off. All right. Didn't hit the threads or the rods, good. Yeah, we got some rat's nests, but uh, for the most part, it looks okay. So the, the goal here is to get this drum off, right? I mean, I'm, I'm obviously gonna clean everything else up, but let's focus on that. So there's some bolts here. Now these aren't even stuck. This being coated with grease helps keep it from getting rusty. So bearing here. What's this? Seal? Spacer. Gasket. Check this out. Ah, it turns. It's a miracle. It's a good sign. You can see over here, there's a crack. It's it slid off a little bit, but it's, uh, trying to figure out the best way to do this. Cause... Change of plan here. So I put a puller on this gear, and this is, this puller is about maxed out by the way. Um, and it's pushing the shaft through. You can see it's pushed it all this far. And there's a space here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna push this entire thing off, which is fine. Then I can at least work on it off of the uh, winch. Okay, I got it all set up here. So if I just turn this, the whole shaft turns, but it's so it's not that tight. So I can just hold this with the shaft with my hand while I drive it out. It's about out. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right. Eh, not too bad. That's a big one. So in here, this is a seal, which I, there is a replacement for. It's quite expensive, but I'll definitely be replacing that. I'm still thinking about the best way to fix this. I mean, the best case would be just to replace the drum, but that's, I'm never gonna find that. So I think what I'm gonna do, this is actually way thinner than I was expecting. Um, so I'll probably come in here and just tap all this out. Um, like and this, this is probably just gonna break off. It's folded over. And yeah, some of this looks pretty bad. So I'll do what I can, I'll heat it up and tap it out. And then when I get it back in the winch, if it's like folded way out, then I can just tap it in. So there's like a, you know, a 16th of a gap or something like that just so it doesn't drag. I'm not sure, I'll think about that for a while. If you have any suggestions, let me know. The teeth on this gear look really, really good. I mean, there's some surface rust on the, on the top, but who cares, doesn't matter. The actual tooth face looks really nice. No chips. I've, I've looked over the whole thing already, so this is like brand new. Just gonna make a quick comment on this jury rig cart that this thing's been sitting on. Originally, I was a little bit worried about it, but it, it was once I moved it over here, it was very stable, and I was not worried to uh, work on it. The one thing I was being careful about, though, when I was hitting on it with the uh, the mallet, when anytime you have something that sits up on a cribbing like this, you got to worry about the pieces kind of falling out when you're hitting on it. So I stopped every once in a while and checked, and it wasn't really moving. A couple pieces were starting to move, but uh, it's it's plenty safe. I, I don't have any issues with it. Okay, so I'm gonna rebuild these brake arms. The nice thing about this being a non-cat thing is that these bushings are like a normal size. They're one inch outer diameter and three quarters inch inner diameter. I've got one pulled out right here. I also gotta figure out this. There's like, this I think is supposed to rotate, but it's completely frozen in here. 
There's a pin through here. There was a cotter pin, which I had to drill out. This entire thing is just completely rusted. And it's got like a non, it's got a weird wear pattern on here. It's like all flat. This is supposed to be round, I'm pretty sure. Okay, it's loose. I can feel it moving finally. It shouldn't be too hard to replace. I mean, this was originally round at one point, obviously, but there's like a flat spot here and here, and then it just got locked up on there. crusties inside this bearing. All right, so to get that shaft off, looks like maybe take this top gear off. Okay, these are loose. Wonder why that is. Guess good thing there's safety wire. So the way they have this set up is there's cone bearings on each side, but they're they're angled out. So I already kind of banged on here a little bit, and I think it's sliding out. Yeah, you can see there's slop in there. So I think the way this works is <clears throat> there's on this side, there's shims behind this bearing retainer. Is there shims on here? There's no shims on this side. So this plus the shims on the other side set the preload. So I really shouldn't have to worry about preload when I put this back together. Okay, it's through. Is this, how does this gear come off? It must come off the other way. Let's see how tight this is on here. Oh, it's moving, that's good. All right, nothing's pressed on too tight, which is really good because I'm not gonna damage any bearings by tapping them off like this. There we go. All right. Well, I didn't damage the bearing. I think we'll get it later. So now the whole thing, it actually has to slide out the other direction. The plot thickens here. Before I can take this bearing retainer off, this gear is in the way. And this is the gear that drives drum gear. It's on the shaft with a pin. The shaft is threaded. Maybe you can pull the shaft. Yeah, that's probably how you do it. You probably pull it. Well, let's just try something simple. It might get, it might pop right out of here. I don't need to get too fancy. Yeah, it's moving. I just replaced it with a stud and it's coming right out. There we go. So how is this gear supposed to even come out of here? Nope, not gonna go that way. All right, that's a bust. I don't know, maybe I guess I do have to take this thing out first. Not sure yet. Maybe now I can slide this. Pardon my hand. Oh my gosh, can you see that? There's like two, a little notch cut in the plate right here. This is just so it just clears. Oh, that's, that's exactly why that notch is there. This is crazy. Okay, those are the shims. I'm gonna hold on to those. Now, I gotta get the cup bearing. I need to pull that out. Get it 
out of there. What was that? It's interesting like the differences in design between the cat and the, the Heister stuff here. Like there's no washers, everything's safety wired. Is this a shim? Yeah. Now this could be a problem since these are all flat heads and this was in the brake compartment which was the really rusty, dirty one. And this is not even the right screwdriver. I might have to get, make one up. Oh, never mind. Maybe I got lucky. That one's pretty tight. That one's tight. That one's loose. All right, well three are loose. I don't really see any way that this can't not work. Maybe I should be wearing eye protection for this. Uh huh. Oh. A lucky day here. Oh, I broke the bit there. In case you're wondering, yes, I will replace these fasteners. I'm gonna try, I'll see if I can find torque head, torx heads or something. Flat heads. Fortunately, they're big enough where you can get the chisel in like that and break them loose. All right. Oh man, there's, you can see the condensation on there. These races sure are sure not very tight in there. So I think this hole is supposed to be just big enough for this gear to come out. This one on the left here. That right gear only slides off in the right direction. Getting ready to pull this gear. There's like a rock in here or something. I'm not sure how this would have ever happened. I don't know. I don't even know how that would be in there. It's like the laziest puller ever. Works though. Okay, we got a problem here. I'm trying to get this shaft out. So this shaft, like these, this gear is all part of the shaft. This gear is supposed to slide off, but there is a bearing right there, which is, it looks like it's either pressed on or it's just rusted on. I cannot get it off. Actually, before I ran the torch, I just came in here with my ball peen and gently started tapping it. And you can see it's broken. It was flush up against there right now. So I think just having that puller put some pressure on there and you can see in there it's uh it's moved so i'll just keep tapping away at it and then tightening the puller and i think i can get it off getting there i think once the bearing's off it'll come out a lot easier Bearings off. No, yes, finally. Basically using every trick in the book on this thing. My goodness. Gonna have to resort to trickery to getting this gear back on. Probably gonna have to boil it or something to get it hot enough. Fortunately, I didn't damage it. I was very gentle with the ball peen. Okay, last thing is the input shaft and pinion. Looks pretty straightforward. 
there was a uh, cotter pin over on this nut that I already removed. Now these are not safety wired. Come on. Gear looks okay. Not too worn. Okay, so we have another nut here that's also loose and it's held in place with this cotter pin. See this on the bottom? It's just complete grit, which is why I'm gonna think I'm gonna coat the inside of this casting. Yeah, this is nice. All right, the gear also looks pretty good. Okay, case is broken down. So next step is gonna be cleaning the heck out of it. Um, and I think I am gonna coat the inside just because it's uncoated and a lot of rust is just down at the bottom there. Okay, I've actually thought about this for quite a while and I've decided to not take apart the rest of the drum, which is just basically that center shaft and the bearings, and I'll show you why. So this is only in the D4N manual, not the normal D4 manual, but you can see how this is put together. There's two cone bearings that are facing each other um, on both sides. There's four bearings total, and I just, I think it's gonna be a fiasco to drive that shaft out without destroying all these bearings. Those bearings are $50 each. And um, I, from what I can see, they're they're in great shape and the whole thing spins. So I just don't wanna do it. I think it's, especially after that middle shaft, that was really hard and it's gonna be, this would be four times harder, pretty much. So these bearings look better than the bearings in the actual case. They turn great. And then there's also the, the matter of setting preload on them. I have no idea how you would do that. There's no shims that I saw. So I think it's best to just leave this be. I mean, there's no evidence that there's any issues here. So I'm just gonna uh, clean, clean up the sides as best as I can, and then I'll flush out the bearing area with diesel, make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. And gear oil does get in there, so it gets, that's how it gets lubricated. Plus, I have a feeling that I have enough to keep me busy. These are all winch parts that I pulled off. Hopefully I can remember how they go back together. One thing I discovered on this manual, and this will be helpful if anyone else ever tries this. So the base D4 winch manual, and, and I call it a manual, but really it's just like assembly drawings and like part numbers. But they did not include the input pinion shaft and they did not include the drum parts draw, like drawings. So I had no idea what those part numbers are, what the seal numbers were. I did find on like the specifications page, most of this is mine, but in the actual original PDF, there's the seals. These are all the seal part numbers, and then I have the cross references here that I found. So at least they had that. I also found this D4N manual. This is a later winch model. And this did include, this has like the drum, this is the drum right here. And it also has the input pinion shaft assembly, which you really kind of need to do what I'm doing. So fortunately, and I, I looked through like the rest of this manual and, and basically these two winches are exactly the same. The only difference I can find was that the D4N has an upgraded brake. It's like more like an automotive drum brake where the pads come out and they have return springs where this has like that brake band. So that's the only difference I saw. The seal numbers from here do line up with the hand drawn seal numbers. So I guess I'll find out if this is accurate. The other nice thing on here is it tells you like, so if you run 5 8 line, you can run 484 or 485 feet and 3 quarters of 335. I'm thinking I might go 5 8 I mean, every time I've ever winched, I've always needed more line. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. It's probably going to be a few weeks before you see that winch again. It's going to be a lot of cleaning and prep work. I really like to strip the inside down and paint it with Gliptol and then paint all the linkages and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty time consuming and it's not really much to film, it's pretty boring. So the next video might be working on the excavator here. 
I'm gonna install a gantry over the top and hopefully it's like a temporary shelter so I can work under there with some lights and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I really appreciate it and I'll be back soon.